This video is brought to you by NCIX.com. Great technology, selection, and service. Hey, hello everyone, I'm Dmitry with Hardware Canucks, and before we begin this review, I want you to think of the first thing that pops into your head when I mention InWin. Their reputation within the case market has seen many downs, because they seem to focus on very niche and expensive productions, like the $350 D-Frame. Materials and build quality is one thing, but when core functionality is lacking, it's hard to justify a purchase. But I feel they are slowly starting to come back to their senses with regards to core functionality. And today, this Inwin 707 full tower is going to get the full Hardware Canucks treatment. It retails for $140, comes both in black, red and white, black versions. Now, is this price range competitive? Absolutely not. You can pick up the N2 Lux or the Pro, the Definer 5, the H440, the Silent Base 800, all outstanding and accessible choices for less cash. But I'm not giving up on the 707 yet. I love the red and black accent, this unusual shaped side panel window, and of course the brushed aluminum front facade that unfortunately is not fully uniform as the 5 quarter inch drive bay door has this different plastic finish that also feels extremely flimsy and will most definitely interfere with anything that is not completely flush in those 5 quarter inch drive bays. The ventilation on both sides is adequate and the panel is spaced out just fine, behind which we find dual 140mm fans included, sitting on these uh, very flimsy clips, one just popped out, there's no dust filter here and the entire front frame is super restrictive, I'm not impressed. The I.O. ports are located up top with an activity LED, dual USB 3 and USB 2, audio jacks and a discrete power button on the right, a reset switch is nowhere to be found. The top exhaust area can support triple 120mm fans only, weirdly without any 140mm fan holes, and while I do appreciate the symmetry up top, we all know the convenience of having these holes offset closer to the side panel for extra clearance with any top radiators. I'm disappointed not to see that. Also notice these rubber grommets on all the fan mounting holes, but uh, they are quite large, requiring washers to be used as otherwise the standard radiator and fan screws just fall through. Luckily washers are provided in accessories, uh, but uh, they don't look very neat when installed. Plus it has an internal mesh pre-installed, uh, it's appreciated but it is not removable, making the cleaning process extremely difficult and after having the case just sit around fully closed for a few days, look at how much dust it collected on the floor. So those dust filters are not very effective. At the back, nothing unusual, 4 grommeted water cooling holes, a 140mm exhaust fan, 8 PCI slots with plenty of square ventilation on the side and a bottom mounted power supply with, I'm sorry, Sorry to say, but an embarrassing dust filter for $140. I mean, come on, in win. Also, the case feet are tall, but it looks like they forgot to attach any rubber bits onto these, so yeah. There's a 120-140mm fan cutout on the other side panel, right behind the CPU cutout. I'm not sure this is necessary, but it doesn't hurt the case either. So getting inside, we find a very strange color scheme on those 5 quarter inch mounting uh, knobs. Whoever thought yellow or sort of limeish green had a place in a black red case is mistaken in my opinion. Plus it seems that color scheme has been thrown out of the window completely with entirely white front IO cables and a power SATA cable for that exhaust fan. Now the hard drive cage can support up to 8 units Toolless mechanical and side SSD mount, so one of the corner pegs will have to come out, that's a bit annoying. Now look at just how blocked that drive cage is. I'm surprised this actually passed through testing because there will be almost zero airflow coming in from the front, and a bracket to house an additional 120 or 140mm fan on there won't do much as the fan won't breathe at all. Now the drive cage is modular, so you can remove the bottom portion to install dual 120 or 140mm fans there or remove the entire cage so uh, to let the case breathe. And with my reference system assembled, the cutouts around the motherboard are clearly designed to accommodate for XL and eATX motherboards, uh, but don't fully benefit ATX or micro ATX motherboards as they are so spaced out. 
And there's nothing underneath the motherboard either, aside from the very bottom cutout, and routing everything just seems like a hassle and doesn't look very pretty either. Coming around to the back, we find no SSD brackets, only a few cable tie hoops, plenty of room for cables though, but this is not what I was expecting for a 2015 release, and in this price bracket especially. I couldn't even mount my X61 cooler, uh, which is a 280mm cooler, because the top does not support 140mm fans, and I even had to mount our 240mm all-in-one cooler in the first front two slots up top to let me round the 8-pin cable in the corner there without any clearance issues. And everything about the interior layout screams lack of functionality that we're not used to in this price range. And I mention price range because that is important. The Inwin 707 is a perfect example of where size and build quality alone won't sell if the builder is not satisfied with the system. And in my case here, I was not expecting such a disappointment. Inwin clearly has more work to do. So I hope you guys enjoyed this review. Let us know if you have a case in mind that should pass the Hardware Knox treatment. And make sure to subscribe because we have this coming next. So thank you so much for watching, stay tuned for the full video on that little teaser, and we'll see you in the next one.